Hi, I'm Scarlett Evans. I'm here with Asha Saxena, who is the founder and CEO of Women Leaders in Data and AI. Asha, I'm really excited to speak to you because I feel like data and AI is obviously an industry that historically has been relatively male dominated and I think as we see AI begin to take a really central role in a lot of different industries, it's really important that we ensure women are very much a part of the conversation. So can you just talk about your organization, when it was set up, and what your mission is? Absolutely, first of all, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to talk about such an important topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as you said, I am Asha Saxon, I'm the CEO and founder of Women Leaders in Data and AI. Uh, my, my, uh, historically, my, my background is in computer science engineering. So I did my undergrad and grad in computer science, and I started my career as a programmer. And I went on building uh, companies around technology. My very first company I built was in data management consulting, and then I built an e-commerce company and then a healthcare software company. Even though I built technology companies and very few women, uh, even when I was growing up in this industry, we just get used to being the only woman in the boardroom or only women in the engineering schools and you know engineering environment. But I have to say that during the pandemic was the time when it really hit me that, oh my God, we are going digital faster than we ever thought we would. With a hybrid uh, community and the hybrid workplaces, people were more on computers and creating digital footprint than ever before. And I started writing uh, my book, The AI Factor, um, and during that time, 2019, I thought about writing the book and I spent two years, 2020 to 2022, where uh, you know, I really got into it because I had the time I was home, uh, traveling a lot less than I ever traveled. And what I realized was, uh, oh my God, as we are building, as I was writing and I was researching, only 18% of women are participating in writing algorithms, which means that we are, we are living in the world where the world is going to be run by algorithm and we will not be at the table making decision and creating the world. Mm. And then, you know, they say in life you have dots and you finally connect the dots and you say why these things are happening. So I write the, I'm writing the book, the pandemic hits. Uh, I know now the digital world is getting created faster and women are not taking part. And, and then you start hearing like my friend's father passed away and you know, the life is too short. Mm -hmm. And I started worrying that, oh my God, I spent 30 years in this technology industry and I might not be remembered. So the worry that as an engineer, I've created companies but I didn't leave a legacy started bothering me. And I was ta talking to a friend of mine who is in finance and she was in 1970s, she was the highest ranking woman in J.P. Morgan Chase. At that time it was called Chemical Bank and she was reporting to David Rockefeller, but she had to go home to her unemployed husband to get a signature to open the bank account, and this is in New York City, oh 1973. And then it hit me, it's like, oh my God, as a technologist, as an engineer, we are not, we are not counted in what we are creating. And so this whole thought about really doing something about it, and I can't do alone anything, you know, like as a one person, I can only do so much. So we created this movement called Women Leaders in Data and AI. Started with C-suite leaders of Fortune 1000 companies. And the uh, thought was that we bring C-suite leaders, male allies and female leaders, bringing them together who have, who have the impact of 10,000 employees within their organization. The reason was that we want to make sure that we create these leaders, the C-suite leaders should be strong, ethical and responsible, who can then create the movement within their organization, and that creates the movement in, movement in the community. So me, mine, and us. Hmm. The whole concept about take care of our leaders so that they take care of the com their community, and that community takes care of the bigger community. Hmm. And so the, the whole journey uh, we formalized as an organization in January 2020, and, uh, and it's been two years. Hmm. We've been in operation, this is our third year now and we have 120 C-suite leaders who have, are committed to creating the movement where we bring women leaders at the table as we build the world with data and AI. 
And I'm so proud of the community and the organizations who've stepped up and said that this is serious, and they've joined our organization to create the movement. So we have large organizations like Accenture, Deloitte, KPMG, but also L'Oreal, Chevron, Molex, Mars, who are coming in and saying, we want to make sure not only we create the movement within Wilda leaders, we call it Wilda, women leaders in data and AI, within women leaders, but also create an impact in the community. So Chevron launched Wilda at Work programs, which are corporate programs, to create the movement within the organization so you can retain these women leaders. Mm. So we have the concept called circles, where peer-to-peer -peer community comes together in small circles every month to provide the support. So we say the three pillars, community, growth, and impact. We need to make sure we build our community and have the right support. So during the life's ups and downs, you're learning from each other, from your peers. We're constantly investing in growth because you have to be a lifelong learner, especially when you're in technology, to make sure that you're constantly evolving. And the last step we talk about is impact. As leaders, you need to create an impact. Impact in your society, in your community. Mm -hmm. So how can we pay forward so we have build a nation where we make sure that the next generation is getting built. So with those three pillars, I do believe that we can create the change. It might be a little slow, but the more we can bring the women leaders, the male allies, is, again, it's, even though we call it women leaders, we make sure we are inclusive of our male allies. We can't do it without them. Mm. So I always talk about step up, reach out to me if I can help, share the knowledge of what I have learned in my organization. We can share the kind of programming that works for us, and anyone can learn from us. I'm happy to share the knowledge because I can't do it alone, you can't do it alone. We have to create a movement mm. with everyone stepping up. Mm. And also, it's so important for young women, it, it's important for women like you to be platformed as well so that young women can see exactly. that actually it's an industry that is welcoming to women. When, when it still kind of has the perception of being a, a little bit difficult for some women to get into, when in reality, of course, there are such incredible female figures working in the industry, but we need to we need to see them more, we need to hear from them more, because it's about obviously retaining and, you know. Growing them. Growing yeah. them, but also about attracting them in the exactly. first place so we can see it as a cycle that continues. So I have to tell you a story, it's a great story about uh, role models, mm -hmm. you know? A lot of times when you're in the room and you're alone, you don't see role models, you don't know what's possible. Mm. And I was talking to uh, a C-suite leader at a large financial services company, and she said, Asha, when I saw that there was a speaker who I heard from, she could do it, she had the family, so it's, it's like, as a young uh, professional, you get worried about how do I balance family and work, and mm. is it okay for me to be ambitious? Can I climb the career ladder? And she said, Asha, that having a role model who shared the story was really pivotal to my success. We launched speaker series within Wilda, and the speaker series is where we bring our C-suite leaders to the large community. So organization like KPMG partner with us where they uh, bring in our speaker series within the organization. And we bring in C-suite leaders who tell the story about career journey, how they launch data programs, how they launch leadership programs, and how do female leaders lead. And it's truly an inspirational way of motivating and inspiring young leaders. Mm. I get so many emails and LinkedIn messages where the younger women, as you say, get inspired by looking at the women who've made it. Mm. It's not easy, and it's still not easy. It was not easy in, during when I was growing up. It's not easy now for the young women. And I think having role models and having speaker series, uh, and the Wilda has invested a lot in making sure our speaker series are value add to the organizations where we go sh you know, show up. Uh, so I'm really proud that at least we are creating impact in the organizations who partner with us. Mm. Um, and I will call out for any organization who's interested to reach out, mm. to learn about our speaker series, or Wilda Circles, or Wilda Mentoring Program. And I think Mentoring Program is great where senior female leaders are mentoring the junior leaders mm. on a constant basis. It's hard to mentor or create the scale, but what we do is, we do it virtually and we do it in breakout sessions. So we'll bring in the senior leaders and we bring you know, a large group of um, mid-managers or um, you know, professionals who are in early careers 
and break, break them based upon what their needs are. Mm. And we do a regular, you know, every other month sessions where we make sure that we are mentoring the next generation. Mm. And so you've been established around two years now, this is your third year. I guess looking ahead at the next 12 months, what do you expect to see, but also what do you kind of hope to see both from the organization, but also from the industry as a whole? So we are, go we are going international. Wilda has now launched in Europe. So we are now a global leadership organization focused on building next generation leaders, which I think is critical. Um, we also are launching regional within US. We've been pre predominantly doing our virtual leadership sessions and we do summit and gala. Our summit and gala uh, is on November 9th uh, this year uh, in New York City. And what we really hope is that we get a lot of women to nominate either themselves or a woman they have been inspired by, yeah. a male ally, someone who's really championed for you, or an organization who's really done the right thing. Our goal is to recognize. They say the best way to uh, encourage someone to do the right thing is to recognize the good behavior. Mm. And so we are really, uh, our, our Wilda Awards is a big program where we bring in leaders around the globe to nominate the women, the men, and the organizations who are doing the right good work. Mm. Even if you don't win, it's okay, because I say you're a winner if you're nominated, because someone recognized you. Mm. So I do encourage everyone to nominate Wilda Awards, which is on wlda.tech, wilda.tech, and you can nominate someone you feel is doing the right thing in the space of building women leaders. And so we, we announced that nine awards, nine categories, and on November 9th in New York City, we will be doing the award ceremony. It's at the Plaza Hotel in New York. And I'm super excited about that because I love cheering for the women leaders yeah. and cheering for the male leaders and the organizations who's doing the, uh, the good work. Uh, I'm someone who stands up and applauds and cheers every yeah. time a winner is coming because it makes me feel that we're doing something right. And I tell you, baby steps, create small wins to create the big movement. Mm. And my journey is just started and I hope it continues even after I'm gone. I'm sure it will. I think you, you said it all. I think it takes small steps, but the overall picture is still just, it's so exciting and it sounds like you've got such an exciting year ahead of you. But thank you so much for speaking with us today. Um, and yeah, good luck with everything and have an amazing rest of the show here. Thank you so much for having me. And I love talking to uh, people are here at AI Summits with a great organization and a great yeah. cause and wonderful topics, so I'm excited to be here. No, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You.